it's never a bad time to make your own cloud. These boxes keep getting easier to set up. The folks at Ugreen are sponsoring this video to chat about making your own cloud with a network storage box like this, the DH4300+. Plus. They sent this my way to take on a test drive, share some thoughts. And this compact bad boy can fit so many terabytes inside of it. That was kind of corny. All right, this is a four bay solution. It means you can start off with one hard drive. You can use a couple slots or you can use all four and the machine can handle up to 120 terabytes of storage. 120 TB is a lot. It's hard to quantify how much that is. It could be millions of photos. I have a lot of photos, but I don't have millions of photos. My current music collection, for example, is at roughly 20,000 files, and that's only clocking in at 240 gig. If you maxed out this machine, 120 TB could hold over 10 million songs. Now, the folks at Ugreen did supply some drives for me to take this test drive as probably a more realistic starting storage space. Four drives sporting four terabytes each. A quick aside, I gotta point this out. I was real nervous when they sent the drives because they showed up in Ugreen shipping boxes. And I was so relieved when I opened these boxes and they were just normal Western digital red hard drives. There's that other storage manufacturer who will remain unnamed in this video who was forcing their customers to only use their labeled hard drives. You had to buy hard drives from the company that built the box. And I think that's a bad idea. You should be able to use any drives you want. I think you'll get the best longevity and results by using drives designed for a storage solution like this, but that's all gonna come down to your needs and your budget. I have certainly digressed. The setup and installation is really easy. The top pops right off and you have immediate access to the drive caddies. Now it's not quite a toolless solution, but you'll get it all set up with a screwdriver and screws, all of which are included. Without rushing, I was able to unpack and install all four drives in roughly eight minutes. Then we plug in the power supply and then I plugged in an ethernet cable to my network switch or you might connect it directly to your router and the DH4300 Plus is ready to go. I don't wanna oversell the setup, but I really appreciate the design here. We're positioning this as a slightly more intermediate option than just a single network drive, but it's not as complicated as a more professional grade solution. When we have to put in the drives ourselves, this is about as easy as it gets to properly secure these drives and make sure the operation of this machine doesn't get too loud or rattly. I set this up as a totally fresh system. I've not had any other Ugreen storage products. I don't have a Ugreen account. So installing an app on my phone guided me through setting up an admin account and binding my email address to that account. The machine setup is largely autopilot. Most of the initial setup and installation is handled for you and only took about two minutes to finish updates and reboot the box. And from there, you get a nice little intro to the app and you can choose what kind of storage volume you want to create. Based on the number of drives you pop in and how much protection or redundancy you think you might need for your data, you can choose different RAID solutions. I'm opting for RAID 5. I get the quantity of three drives, so instead of 16 terabytes total, I'll only get 12, but then if any one drive fails, I won't lose all my data. One drive is held for redundancy. Creating this storage pool can take a while. Terabytes of storage, this part, that's never fast. With my four terabyte drives, striping and optimizing the pool, that took a couple hours. If you put in bigger drives, that could take longer. I really like what's offered up front in this app and control panel. We really can make this super simple, just one big lump chunk of storage, or we can go deeper into managing storage, backing up other devices automatically, and installing programs to run on this box like a proper computer. And from the phone connectivity side, I think this is kind of cute. NFC is a fun little add-on. You tap your phone to the front of the case, it fires up the app, and it can quickly get you into sharing files back and forth. I really miss all the fun tap and share things we used to do 
with our phones. NFC is really not being utilized as much as it used to be. Demonstrating on this video, I'm gonna be showing this off mostly using Android phones, but Ugreen supplies apps for iOS, macOS, and Windows too, which is another nice consideration where you have a familiar interface no matter what device you access this from. Now, I've been running a different box for a couple of years now, and my current solutions phone app is quite a bit different than logging into the box over a browser on my PC. You have to look for features in different places and that can make uh, running a storage solution a bit more confusing. So uh, we make jokes that the cloud is just putting your data on someone else's computer, right? But using something like this, you have a computer you can use to manage your own storage, and you can access this anywhere you have a data connection. Walking around this box as the demo, there's a front-facing USB-C for accessories, and on the back, we have additional USB-A and an HDMI. You can even install a web browser and a bunch of complimentary apps. Oh, that's what I really like. Some network storage solutions are crazy simple, but then, there's not much room to grow. Here, the setup might look more intimidating, but Ugreen allows for the user to start slow and then take this farther if they want to. If I have a critique on that, I hope Ugreen can increase the number of directly installable apps. There's Docker support for those who know how that works, but the list of directly installable compatible programs right now that's a little lean. And also, I don't want to hit the box too hard for this. This is not one of Ugreen's more professional grade solutions. So there's also no way to increase RAM and we can't install a separate NVMe solid state drive if we wanna have a more advanced option for buffering files. We can use larger SATA hard drives if you wanna put those in the drive caddies, but we can't use those little skinny, tiny NVMe internal drives. Again, more professional features like having a second ethernet port or that hardware access for a solid state drive cache. That'll be found on a more expensive device like the DXP4800. Happily, the DH4300 Plus does have faster ethernet support, 2.5 gigabit per second speeds, which moves files around your home network really quickly. As an example, I'm here at home, my local network is significantly faster than uploading files to Google Drive. I needed a couple gig of photos to test this thing out, and using my phone, it wasn't any different transferring to this as it might have been if I'd plugged in a really fast hard drive. Three gigabytes of photos over Wi-Fi were uploaded in under two minutes, including the time it took me to create a new folder and to find the task manager in the Ugreen app. Getting the exact same group of photos up to Google Drive took over 40 minutes on Wi-Fi. Judging the speed of any cloud solution, of course your network connection matters a lot, but you have a lot more control over that on your home network. But I digress again. Getting back to this box, the processor inside is an ARM chip, which is something I've been having a lot of fun showing off in tablet and laptop reviews recently. We can get really good performance out of an ARM chip at a lower power draw. So this computer should run cooler, which helps when you're spinning up multiple hard drives. We shouldn't have to run the fan as hard, and I like this vertical build, I mean, this is a nice touch, as the bottom fan can be larger than many of the fans that I've seen on other home or small office solutions. It pulls air through the drives and vents vertically, and the top cover can be flipped around if you need to point that for better air access, depending on where you get the best airflow. I'm gonna flip this back so that the logo is on camera, but I thought this was a cute touch, you know, being able to direct these vents. Back to the chip. This is roughly in line with the performance we might have seen from a premium expensive phone around 2018 or 2019. That might not sound super impressive until, I mean, you kind of think back, remember how good those phones were at being computers. That is a lot of performance to throw at a device that's mostly gonna manage files and media. The chip design is a little older, but it still has some simple machine learning hardware built in. It's got a little MPU that can tackle some of the AI basics. If you use this for photo backup, that little AI component can scan and look for faces and organize by different people. And all of that analysis stays on the box. You're not giving that data to a cloud storage solution 
it's scanning and organizing right here. The NPU here is not as powerful as a newer phone or laptop, but these machine learning models have gotten really efficient. From installing a model on this through the app to scanning three gigabytes of photos, the scan finished so fast I literally could not time it how quickly that page refreshed. It's getting kind of silly. I mean, we're so impressed by cloud storage services that recognize people in our photos and how we can search for things inside each photo or help us identify similar photos so we can delete copies. That's a really low bar now. Our home solutions are doing that very well and sometimes faster than using an online cloud photo search. This is excellent performance at low power draw. And if we wanted to use this as a media server, I mean, for example, I like to keep copies of my favorite movies and watch them through apps like Jellyfin or Plex. This is plenty powerful to stream 4K content directly to a TV or another computer. Now those apps like Jellyfin, they can squish the video quality if you're watching over a poor data connection. Let's say you're not getting great 5G signal. That's called transcoding. And this Ugreen can do that, but it's not great at doing that. The ARM chip will be working really hard to try and scale down 4K quality, but it can do it. If one user is transcoding high quality video to another device, Performance might slow down if another user is also trying to access files on the Ugreen. That might be a bit more advanced for some families out there. I think this is drawing the right expectations for a home solution, which can also serve some other roles and maybe fit in well in a small office. Running this in your home, you might not want a beefier, more powerful machine drawing more power. Network storage, these are computers we want running all the time. We want them to be accessible whenever we need them. And it's tough to beat the idle power draw of an ARM chip. I, from there, the only other concern is going to be your home network and broadband connection. If you want to use this as your cloud, but your internet service provider supplies a slow upload speed, that can be a pain point for running your own personal cloud. How you can access this box when you're out and about, which depending on where you live, your ISP might not even advertise what your upload speed is. But I keep digressing. Once you get that sorted and you get this set up, the price starts looking pretty good. The configuration I'm showing here with four, four terabyte drives and the price of the box itself, I mean, this is an upfront cost. Looking at the Ugreen website at the time I shot this, the entire build here, we'd be just under $800. That sounds like a lot, and this certainly won't be an impulse buy, like maybe just another external hard drive. But let's talk through this. Let's stick with the formatted drive storage in RAID 5. I'm able to use just over 10 terabytes of space. If I paid for 10 terabytes on Google Drive, that would cost me $50 a month. In 15 months, I would break even and then I would not need to spend any more until I decided I needed bigger drives in this case. For a lot of folks, it would be a while before you maxed out 10 TB. And it gives you a lot more freedom to hold on to files, which you might feel you need to delete if you're paying for cloud storage and trying to minimize your subscription costs. Let's say you run Google Drive for two years which would cost you about $1,000, and then you decided to stop paying for Google Drive, you don't get anything. You were just leasing that space from Google, and once you stop paying, it's gone. Your Google Drive is locked up until you delete files and get back under the free storage limit. You get nothing. You have nothing to show for that monthly payment, once you stop paying. Now, it's not to say I don't think people should use services like Google Drive or Apple iCloud at all. This Ugreen has tools built in to sync files between the DH4300 Plus and your cloud storage services. You can mix and match your solutions. I personally use OneDrive to send some files to family and to work on projects when I'm collaborating, but the bulk of my storage is now done locally on a networked box. The more storage you need to manage, the more cost effective a local solution becomes. I'm a big fan of rolling your own cloud. And for a lot of the folks in my audience, this is one of those handy solutions to help out your less tech savvy family. Set yourself up as an admin, carve up some smaller storage buckets, 
and assign that to your family. Maybe give all of your relatives a single terabyte. And after a year or two, I think you'll save some cash over having multiple bigger cloud subscriptions. The DH4300 Plus is easy to set up. It gives you room to grow. You control your own files without sacrificing all the fun AI stuff. And the longer you use it, the more money you're gonna save. So again, I wanna thank the folks at Ugreen for sending this my way, letting me take this for a test drive. And if you're interested in more information on Ugreen storage solutions, there will of course be links in the description below this video. As always, thanks so much for watching, for subscribing to the channel, smashing bell icons, and most of all, for sharing content from your favorite creators. That sharing is really the most important part these days. I, of course, also have to shout out my amazing patrons. All the names scrolling by on your screen right now, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart. These are all the folks that are helping to keep the lights on here in the Gadget Lab. They're basically the coolest tech nerds in the universe, so I hope you'll check them out. I hope you'll consider joining the crew at patreon.com slash somegadgetguide. Now, you know where you'll find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy basically everywhere, but these days, trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, a little on the blue skis, and a lot less so on the Facebooks, threads, Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next video.